Hey everyone, welcome to Neuropod. My name is Ryan Tanaka, and the outline for this Neuropod Premium episode starts with a clip from Elon discussing expectations for pricing of Neuralink implants, how that pricing compares to another medical procedure, and how the Neuralink team can achieve that level of pricing. Here's a clip of Elon at the August 2020 Neuralink Progress Update event. Any estimate of how much it will cost at launch and what price it will reduce to over time? Well, I, I think at, at launch, it's probably going to be, it, it, I, I would say that's not really representative because um, at first, I think it's, it's going to be you know, quite expensive, but that price will very rapidly drop. Um, and I think over time, we want to get the, the cost um, obviously down as low as possible. Um, but I think um, I- inclusive of the automated surgery, I think we want to get the, 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 the price down to a few thousand dollars, something like that. Um, and I, I think that's possible. I think it should be possible to get it similar to um, LASIK and, and then the uh, device electronics itself, um, I think will, will not be very expensive um, because it actually does, does use a lot of the parts that are made in extremely high volume in tens of millions of, of units. Uh, for uh, smartphones and and smartwatches and wearables in general. Since Elon references the cost of LASIK eye surgery, I decided to look into some pricing stats. For those who don't know, LASIK is a surgery often performed with a robot and laser. There's lots of variation, but when I take an average of the prices I've seen, LASIK hovers around a cost of $2,000 to $3,000 for both eyes. I couldn't find a good breakdown of the cost for LASIK, So here's a breakdown of a very similar procedure called PRK. It's a slightly more expensive procedure, but it's cool to see how some of the specific costs would get broken up. My guess is similar percentages of the overall cost would be the same for LASIK. The cost of a surgeon's labor hovers around a quarter of the cost, and then the remainder gets split between the equipment and the follow-up appointments after the procedure. I'll circle back to these numbers later in the episode. The numbers help because if we continue thinking about a Neuralink implant in this way, we start to get a better sense of how Neuralink is thinking about the economics of the procedure, the accessibility of the implants, and how damn cool the robot they're building is. Speaking of the robot, Elon also mentioned this at the last update event. You need to have the device, uh, a great device, and you also need to have a great robot that uh, puts in the, uh, the electrodes and uh, does the surgery. So you want the surgery to be as, as automated uh, and, and as possible, and the only way you can achieve the level of precision that's needed is with an advanced robot. Um, so we're really looking for uh, great people who can help develop both the device uh, and the robot. Um, and we feel confident about getting the, uh, the link procedure, the, the installation of a link, done in under an hour. Um, so you can basically go in in the morning and leave the hospital in the afternoon. And it can be done without general anesthesia. So the parallels continue. Although LASIK requires topical anesthesia, or numbing of the surface of the eye, general anesthesia is also not needed. This is important to note because the reason general anesthesia is not used for LASIK is that the LASIK procedure is considered to have less risk than the anesthetic. We could therefore take this to mean that the Neuralink team is trying to make sure that the Neuralink implant procedure is less risky, however you might want to quantify it, than general anesthetic. Although the numbers have been up and down over the United States in the past couple decades, I've seen some forecasts saying the surgery is expected to become much more common globally over the next decade. One even referenced growth from around 2 billion surgeries in 2017 to 5 billion by 2030. LASIK was first approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, in 1998. At that time, the surgery wasn't nearly as commonly known about as it is today. Now let's imagine you have really bad vision but you visit the eye doctor and they say you're a great candidate for this newly approved surgery. It's called LASIK, and the surgery involves using a special knife or laser to cut clear tissue at the front of the eye. Does that sound scary to you? If this statement by itself does, but you generally don't get anxious if you hear someone got LASIK done, that should say something about how much society can influence our thinking. I bring up this point because that's probably how a lot of people feel about Neuralink implants at the moment. But if we fast forward a decade or two, the technology will likely be much more proven and therefore much more accepted in society. Going back to the pricing from earlier, one influence on this pricing is that there are two types of eye doctors. One type is an optometrist, and another is an ophthalmologist. Ophthalmologists are medical doctors who can perform medical and surgical interventions for eye conditions. 
Whereas only in unusual circumstances can an optometrist perform surgery. That is, they aren't required to complete as much training or education as ophthalmologists. This is worth noting when thinking about Neuralink because the team has a goal of making sure the procedure can scale to a wide audience. It wouldn't be scalable if the operators of the robot had to have extensive neurosurgery experience. Elon discusses this exact point in the 2019 Neuralink launch event. If this has to be done by a neurosurgeon, it, is, it cannot be scaled. There just aren't enough neurosurgeons. Um, so it, it must be, um, you know, just, just as one, one wouldn't want sort of like a hand uh, operated laser uh, for, you know, uh, an ophthalmology situation, you really want the, the, the robot doing it with precision. Um, the same thing goes for the brain interface. Let's break down approximate costs for LASIK and assume that the Neuralink implant will have similar costs. There's a little number fudging here because these are just rough calculations, but let's say the total cost of the implant without insurance is $3,000. That would mean $750 for the operator's wages, about $1,000 for the robot, and $1,250 for the follow-up appointments. Now, does this pricing seem unachievable to you? Here are some reasons why I trust that Elon, Max, and the Neuralink team will make it happen. If you followed Tesla throughout the years, you've probably come across their secret master plan. In 2006, Elon released a doc that outlined how Tesla was not just wanting to sell only high-end luxury vehicles. Instead, he and the team had a bigger vision, to transition the world to sustainable transportation. The team has held strong and executed towards this vision for many years. In fact, in 2014, Elon reaffirmed the goal of building a more affordable mass market car when he did an interview in the Netherlands. And in three years, there will be a cheaper one. Tell me about that. That uh, will be a smaller car, it'll be 20% smaller, about half the price, not as many features. So if you think of like the Model S as similar to an Audi A7, A8 mm -hmm. type of thing, then the uh, our third generation car would be more like an uh, Audi A4. A4, right. Okay. Yeah. But still not for a very large public, because it's still an expensive car. Yeah, we're, we're talking about, um, in, in, in dollar terms, about $35,000 mm -hmm. for the car. Um, and that would be, um, but when you consider that relative to a gasoline car, because you save a lot more on gasoline, yep. uh, it's more like a, a $25,000 gasoline car. And would you imagine that? Tesla is now selling the Model 3 for $35,000. Elon then went on to add this. Our goal is to try to make mass market affordable cars. Mm -hmm. it had, that's been our goal from the beginning. So a lot of people wonder, well, you know, why doesn't Tesla just, Tesla just make uh, a mass market yeah. uh, long range electric car right now? And, and the issue is that it takes time to refine the technology. Uh, it takes time to scale up production. So you need economies of scale. You need uh, a, des a major design iteration. Um, and, the, and, and also the t third generation car will be 20% smaller. smaller yeah. So that's, that's essentially how we get to a 50% price reduction. 20% size decrease, uh, factor of 10 production increase, and another design iteration to design for manufacturing. The same is true of Neuralink. Although it's great at the beginning to help a few people with brain disorders, the longer term mission is not achievable without creating a product that's accessible for the mass market. Like Elon stated earlier, the robot is a critical component of making the implants scalable. If you're an Elon Musk fan at all, you're probably familiar with his ardent support for first principles thinking. Elon mentions the concept of first principles thinking in his conversation with Kevin Rose. I think it's also important to reason from first principles rather than by analogy. So the normal way that we conduct our lives is we, 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 we reason by analogy. Um, it's, we're doing this because it's like something else that was done, mm -hmm. or it's like what um, other people are doing. Elon added in this 2012 interview that the cost of battery cells was much higher than they needed to be. And for batteries, they, they would say, oh, it's going to cost, you know, in the, historically it's cost six, $600, per, uh, $600 um, uh, per kilowatt hour. And so it's not going to be much better than that in the future. And you say, no, okay, well, what, what, are, what are the batteries made of? So, so first principles would be to say, okay, what are the material constituents of the batteries? Mm -hmm. What is the spot market value of the material constituents? So you can say, okay, it's got cobalt, nickel, aluminum, carbon, um, and some polymers for separation and a seal can. So break that down in, on a material basis and say, okay, what, if we bought that in the London Metal Exchange, what would each of those things cost? Like, oh, geez, uh, it's like $80 uh, 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 per kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. So clearly, you just need to think of clever ways to take those 
materials and combine them into the shape of a battery cell and you can have batteries that are much, much cheaper than anyone realizes. I trust that this type of thinking is guiding the team at Neuralink as well. And that is the main reason I expect they'll achieve around a $3,000 to $5,000 Neuralink implant in the future. Keep in mind, this would be one order of magnitude cheaper than the cost of a deep brain stimulation surgery. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider supporting by subscribing here, following on Twitter, or sharing the video. Hope you join us again for the next one. Bye.